sense, we call Karen Togallon. Good afternoon, ma'am. You... What do you prefer, Mr. Eisenberger? State have a preference? Uh, okay. I don't. All right. Okay, she's going to be doing what the other side did. Okay. All right, very good. All right. Um, first of all, could you identify your relationship with Mr. Woodward? And then I know you have a statement. Okay. I'm his maternal aunt. Okay, thank you. And since you are. Um, here to present a statement, ma'am, if you would just please raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, ma'am. And please again state your name. Karen Ann Kilgallen. Can you spell your last name for me, please? K-I-L-G-A-L-L-E-N. Thank you, ma'am. All right, you may proceed with your statement. Um, like I just stated, I'm uh, Billy's maternal aunt and I have had a close relationship with Billy all of his life. Uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about what kind of a man Billy is. He's one of the kindest, most, cons excuse me, most considerate, compassionate men I know. There are few people in this world that think of others before themselves. Billy is one of them. Billy's family and faith are the most important things in his life. You'd be hard pressed to find a more dedicated, loving husband, father, and son. His family means the world to him. Billy has never been one to put importance on material things. Even though he wasn't what you might consider a wealthy in a material or financial way, he was infinitely wealthy with the love of family and the solid friendships he's made throughout the years. If Billy saw that you needed something and he had it, he would give it without reservation. He has always enjoyed helping people, especially those less fortunate, a trait not many have. Even though we lived in different states, our family vacations were spent together. We've always been a very close family. Billy always talks about uh, happy family memories he's had throughout his life. Family is where his heart is. Billy does not have a mean bone in his body. I've never heard him say anything disparagingly about anyone. Growing up, he was a good kid, and to my knowledge, has never been in any trouble. He's always courteous and treats everyone respectfully. Another very important aspect of Billy's life is his love of his country. Billy served his country honorably. However, like many veterans that have come home from war zones, he has sustained injuries while serving in the military. Due to a fall, he suffered a serious head injury, the loss of hearing in one ear, and PTSD, which his neighbors knew about. Like so many other veterans, he has endured flashbacks and anxiety. However, as a young person and into his adulthood, I've never known Billy to act out aggressively or angrily. Just the opposite. When he was feeling stressed, he would find a quiet place to rest, usually at home or his parents' home. Billy does not, nor has he ever had an aggressive or hateful personality. His nature was, and is, peaceful and loving. Trying to sum up my feelings, and more importantly, what I know to be true about Billy, is almost impossible to do in just the few minutes we have here today. Billy is a sweet man with a big heart and a wonderful spirit. He's a man of integrity and unquestionable morals. Your Honor, all too often bad things happen to good people. That's what's happened here. However, there's another side to this situation I'd like to remind everyone here about, and it's the indescribable harassment that Billy and his family had to endure. If not for the actions of his neighbors, we would not be here today. I'm hoping that what you hear today and read today from every family member and friend that love and support Billy that it will help you see what a truly wonderful person Billy is. 
and that it will help in rendering your decision today. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And just to note for the record, her statement, I think she added a bit to it, but her written statement was a part of the supplemental notice of filing that was introduced as composite exhibit one for defense. That's correct. Thank you. Uh, Judge, I recall Kathleen, Kathleen Land. Kathleen Land. <coughs> Good afternoon, ma'am. Hello, Your Honor. If you would please raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Please state your full name. Kathleen Land, and I'm also a maternal uh, aunt to Billy. Thank you. You have a statement to present? Yes, I do. You may proceed. Um, I have to say, given everything that's been going on in here today, this wasn't what I was expecting with the other side running through the whole trial all over again. I thought this was just to speak on the characters of the individuals involved in all of this. But I just wanted to let you know that. But I'm going to go ahead and read, even though it might be repeating what everybody else has said. As I said, my name is Kathleen Land, Billy's aunt. I live in Indiana. My husband and I had a dairy farm, which became a place that the family enjoyed many happy memories. Sadly, in 2004, my husband passed away from cancer, at which, to, at which just that time I had to move to town. Billy really missed spending family time on the family. It was a place of peace with family was something he treasured. I watched Billy grow from a baby to a loving son, husband, and father that he is today. You will never find a more caring and more compassionate man. He gives his heart and he ne never looks for anything in return. Again, Billy served in Desert Storm. He had gone through that and I thank God that they were able to save him. And when Billy came back, he came back with PTSD, and he lives with that, sadly, every day. These people that took advantage of his, of his situation, how pathetic of them. Over the years, the VA was finally able to get him therapy and, and medication for his disorder and things started to turn around. Your Honor, I'm asking that you give much thought to all that has been said here today and be lenient with the sentencing. Billy has never been in any kind of trouble in his life except for this devastating situation that could have been avoided if only other people had let him live his life peacefully. These past six years have been heartbreaking for him and our family, and I can't even to imagine how we all will get through what might be ahead of us. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. That's who called Brian Land. All right, and just noting for the record as well, Ms. Land's written statement is part of the notice of filing introduced as a composite exhibit, Defense One. Brian Land, please. Good afternoon, sir. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you out? I do. Please state your full name. Brian Wayne Land. All right. And uh, you have a statement to present, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. You may proceed when you're ready. Your Honor, my name is Brian Land, and I am Billy Woodward's first cousin. <clears throat> I can't even begin to tell you how unrealistic it seems for me to be speaking on Billy's behalf and not the other way around. Growing up, even though our families were separated by many states, we were fortunate enough to always get together for holidays and summer vacations. The summers were really special because Billy would get to come to our family farm, which he loved more than anything, and stay for extended periods of time. It was during these times that we came to be more brothers than cousins 
and when I got to know the quality of person he is. <coughs> Billy is four years older than I am. I, most adolescents, I've always looked up to the other kids. Where this would normally lead me in the direction of mischief, Billy was always one to set a good example, and I can't tell you how many times he caused me to rethink things. <coughs> Through the years and continuing on even now, no one has taught me more about the value of family, respect for others, and kindness than Billy has. I'd like to share with you an act of kindness that I not only witnessed, but was somewhat put out back by <clears throat> as well. Back in 2009, Billy was working for a vendor on the NASCAR circuit driving a truck. This employer provided Billy with a very nice camper to stay in while on the road, and when they were in Bristol, Tennessee, he invited my brother Scott and I to come stay the weekend. We accepted this invitation under the premise that we would have a camper for sleeping accommodations and made no other preparations. When we arrived, however, we found out we found our camp set up outside under the stars next to his own. It turns out that late the night before while checking out the Bristol campground scene, Billy witnessed two heavily intoxicated women struggling to set up their tent and receiving countless offers from the crowd of fellow campers that was gathered around. Most people in this situation would just go on about their business, but Billy stopped and offered to help them. But by this time, they had the tent really messed up and he <clears throat> offered up the camper to help these two out of the bad situation. When we arrived to find this out, my brother and I were initially pretty upset, but we're soon talking amongst ourselves about how we would expect nothing less out of Billy. The following morning, they offered to take Billy out to breakfast to thank him for helping them with their predicament. My brother and I tagged along. I'll never forget one of them telling us while Billy was gone to the restroom that this was the nicest thing anyone had ever done for her and asked if he was always this kind, to which my brother and I just looked at one another and replied, yep, that's Billy. During that conversation, they also offered to surrender the camper back to us, but we declined out of respect for Billy. It's these little acts of kindness and genuine concern for others' well-being that define who Billy Woodward truly is. I know there have been several instances in my life where a good example set by Billy positively affected my decision making. Billy is a loving father, husband, and son. For him, family has always been the top priority in his life. If there was ever a chance to get together with family, Billy would never miss a minute. Whenever we have the opportunity to talk, the conversation usually revolves around the countless fun family vacations we enjoyed so much through the years. Billy has the biggest heart of anyone I have ever known, and seeing him have to go through this tragic situation has broken the hearts of all of us. I can't help <clears throat> but think what an awful shame it is that we've come to this point knowing what a kind and fun-loving heart of gold he has. I know I have nothing but love and respect in my heart for him, and nothing will ever change that. I pray often for him to be able to return to his family, which I truly believe is all he ever wanted. He has always been kind and generous to everyone we would come into contact with, and I never once seen him ask for anything in return. In closing, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to read this letter and hear my perspective of what kind of man Billy Woodward really is. As a family, we all love and miss him dearly very respectfully ask you for the utmost leniency as you consider Billy sentencing. He truly is a good person. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And his letter was also a part of the Notice of Filing Defense Composite Exhibit 1. Next witness. Matt Kilgallen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please raise your right hand and be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, ma'am. Please state your name. My name is Matthew Kilgallen, and I am Billy. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Spell your last name, please. Oh, K-I-L-G-A-L-L-E-N. Thank you. And you may proceed. You are right. My name is Matt Kilgallen, and I'm Billy Woodward's cousin. Family, home, faith, and selfless are some of the words that Billy passed. I'm one of the youngest cousins, and Billy is the oldest. 
Billy took it upon himself to always look out for me and make sure I was not left behind. As kids, I remember playing tag in their yard at night. Billy would stay, stay with me and make sure I was not alone in the dark and to help me climb the tall fence so I might not get caught. He was the one at my side when the waves got high in the wave pool at the local water park, making sure I was safe. He could have had a lot more fun if he just left me behind, but that's not who Billy is. He always goes out of his way to make sure everyone is included. In a world where so many are selfish, Billy is truly selfless. All my life, I've seen Billy put others in front of himself. He's a giver first and never worried if he'll be repaid. He was one of the first people I remember seeing give money to a homeless person. And countless times, I watched him buy a meal for a hungry person outside of a restaurant. He's hands down one of the most loving and generous people I know. Billy is deeply involved in the lives of his immediate and extended families. Billy loved to travel and visit us out of state, but at the same time could not wait to be back home with Barbara and the kids. There was no place he felt more comfortable or wanted to be than home. Billy lives simply. He does not care about the latest and greatest. He just wants to be with those he loves the most. Billy's a loving father and husband to Ava, Ethan, and Barbara. He's a son that honors his father and mother. He's a shining example of Matthew 25, 40, when Jesus says, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. He's a faith leader for many in our family and an integral part of this entire family. Billy has always contributed to the greater good of society, and I hope one day he will be given a chance to contribute again. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. <laughs> You call Kim Kilgall. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Please raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Please state your name. Kim Raymond Kilgallen. Can you spell your last name, please? K-I-L-G-A-L-L-E-N. Thank you very much, sir. You have a statement that you'd like to present? I do. You may proceed. We've heard some heart-wrenching heart testimony today from family and friends on both sides of the aisle, but we need to remember we would not be here if the events leading up to and taking place that night did not make Billy fear, fear for his family's lives. He acted out of love for his family. And I would ask that you be as lenient as the law permits with your sentence. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, Harold. Harold? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Please raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Please state your full name. My name is Harold Harrop. Can you spell your last name for me, please? H-A-R-R-O-P. Thank you, sir. You have a statement to present to the court? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you may proceed. I met Billy Woodward after we bought our house next to his parents in 2007. Ann and Bill Woodward. Uh, anytime I ever saw Billy, he was always polite, spoke to me. I, I had seen him interact with his wife and children, his family. He always seemed to be a wonderful man who cared deeply for his family. Billy's dad and I would meet Billy at a small pond behind Lowe's and we would go fishing together. Billy would come to my auto repair shop and often uh, pick up a scrap metal that I gave him and at times to repair his truck. Billy is a very nice man. He would do anything to help anyone that needed anything. A week or two before everything happened, Billy came to my auto repair shop to have me service his truck. He had his children with him. He told me he was worried to leave them at home because of the issues going on with the neighbors. I feel bad for Billy and his family. I believe that he is being punished for protecting his family. Billy is a good man that would never harm anyone unless he had no choice. I'm sure there are many people in this world that would go to such extreme to protect their family. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
call Lee Thompson. All right, Lee Thompson, please. <coughs> Good afternoon, ma'am. Hi. If you please raise your right hand to be sworn in. Yes. Do you swear or affirm, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. All right, please state your full name. Charmin Lee Thompson. Can you spell your first and last names, please? Charmin, S-H-A-R-M-A-N, last name Thompson, T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. Thank you, ma'am. you have a statement to present to the court? I have notes. I'm sorry that I don't have anything okay. to do. You, you may proceed with whatever you'd like to present. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. It's uh, my honor to speak on behalf of Billy Woodward. I really don't remember when we didn't know the Woodwards. Uh, I've known him and his family many years, as did my mother and dad. There are several things about Billy that I know to be true. First, Billy loves and respects his parents. He is very grateful for their love and commitment to him and his family. Second, he loves his family and frankly, he adores his children. When their first child was born, they felt so very blessed and Billy was determined that that child would be spoiled. The child would know that they were very much loved and he would make sure that she was spoiled. He was also so very proud of their second child. He brought them, he brought his son all bundled up in his car seat to meet my mother. My mother and father both loved Billy and he loved and respected them. Billy has lived out the biblical teaching to care for widows and orphans, and I am one of those. I lost my husband within only two weeks. It, of course, was shocking. Billy did every possible thing that he could to help me with my late husband's business, doing physical work, a lot of hard physical work, he refused to be paid, which is typical of Billy. He did everything he could to help. When my father passed, he did the exact same thing with my mother. He always called her Miss Norma. And whatever Miss Norma needed and wanted, or Billy thought that she might need or want, Billy did that for her. And for that, I am ever grateful. Billy refused to take money for doing any kind of work, no matter how difficult, how long it took, or what it was. You absolutely had to force him to take one thin dime, and then you just had to say to him, this is for the children, take them to McDonald's. Otherwise, he would not take a dime. When the vast majority of Americans are not serving our country in the military, Billy volunteered to serve our country. He didn't have to, but he honorably served and was seriously injured. Billy is a good man, a true friend, and it is an honor to be his friend. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for calling, Marla. Good afternoon, ma'am. Please raise your right hand and be sworn. <coughs> Do you swear or affirm tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Absolutely. Please state your full name. Marla Lee McNear. Can you spell your first and last names, please? M-A-R-L-A-M-C-N-E-A-R. 
E A R. Thank you. You have a statement to present to the court? Um, I'm going to be reading off my notes. Okay, that's fine. You may proceed. I'm really nervous. Sorry. Take your time. I wanted to thank you for listening to me today and allowing me to speak. I have known Billy um, from high school and currently I am a behavior analyst with 30 years of experience in mental health and I am working toward my doctorate in educational leadership. Not that long before what happened happened, um, Billy and I reconnected online on Facebook like many people do and we're glad to see each other again and catching up with old times. Uh, we were reflecting on our younger days. I was a cheerleader and Billy was a football player and he was always very nice, very shy, very sweet, positive. He wasn't the star of the team, but he didn't need to be the star of the team because he was just 100% for the team and making his commitment to his school and his team. He always did a great job and took pride and didn't need to be at the forefront. I was very glad to begin speaking with him again. Um, and we began talking about our kids and our, our, what we do and he just absolutely was very, very apparent that he adored his children and his family. And another connection that we had was we both worked with rescue animals, which takes a very special person to do and someone that has to have a very, very sensitive, very patient and loving heart. Um, Billy began to tell me about his past with his time in the service and his diagnoses and me being in mental health could understand that. And I was extremely concerned because I could immediately tell that he went through some very serious things that were excruciating for him. <laughs> One day we were talking and I began to tell him that I was having a problem with my neighbors. And I was concerned about the treatment that they were giving to their animals and each other. And that I was fed up and I was going to go over there and do something about it. And he just went wild. And he said, you cannot ever do that. Please, I'm begging you. You have to promise me. You can't do that. You have to go get help. He said, and I'm telling you that I've, I've been through this and I've tried everything with the law and things that the law will try to support you on and that you can have their, get their help. And Marla, I'm gonna be honest, nothing is working. But I still have to tell you, try to work through it, but don't go alone. Because I'm worried about you and something could happen. So I promised him that I wouldn't go, and I didn't. And I'm glad, because not that much longer, there was a severe incident. And people were injured. And it, it could have been me. I am very thankful for his support. I'm thankful for what he has done for our country. He's been so passionate about his service to the military. But when I look back and I see the challenges that he's been through, when he went into military training, it may have been the perfect storm for him 
with what he was being challenged with at the injuries at such a difficult time with what you have to go through in the military and in coming out and trying to cope with all that. And then you have the added pressure of what I see in my children every day, which has become an epidemic in our country, and that's bullying. And quite frankly, I just have to say that these are all wonderful people. And it's horrible. Everybody loses. But there's a point where the harassment goes on and on and on and on. And you've made a commitment to your team. This now, your family. And you're seeing things in your own yard get destroyed and your child run into the picture that he's gonna be severely hurt. And that's your baby. And you have to, you have to, you have to keep your commitment to your team. And he just went into a different mode, I believe, that night. And he couldn't take it anymore. And he couldn't dial it back. Because he is a good man with a huge heart. Sometimes I think that in a bullying incident, we hold the person as being bullied to a higher standard than the one doing the bullying. Even though both may be inherently good people. Well, why didn't you report it? Well, why didn't you say something? Well, why didn't you use your coping mechanisms? And then you look at someone like Billy with all of the other things that he has. And you're holding him to a higher standard. A person that is just without those issues has breaking point. I can't even read my notes. I'm so upset. And I'm sorry that this happened. I even feel partly responsible. Because maybe I could have said something to help him like he helped me. Because I want to thank you for listening. And my prayers are with you when you make your decision to please consider all the facts. Thank you, ma'am. We would call Ann to the board. I would ask that her sister be able to accompany her to the podium and just make motion as support. I'm assuming the state has no objection to that. Okay. And I'm sorry, what was her name again? Edward. Yes, I just didn't hear you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Your Honor. If you would please raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. All right, please state your full name. Okay, Anne Teresa Woodward. Thank you. You have a statement to present. You may proceed when yes. you're ready. Well, I was writing this letter. You probably have a copy of it also. Um, I'm writing this letter today for my son to give you just a small glimpse into the past 50 years of his life and what he has meant to us and all of his family and friends. His love for his family, community, and friends, and country can't really be put into words. Soon after he graduated high school, he couldn't wait to enlist in the armed services. He was very honored and proud to be able to serve his country. It truly was his passion to serve until he was injured. After his military service, he went on to become a master machinist. At one, at one point, creating shuttle transportation system flight hardware. 
then he went on to work at Kennedy Space Center with his father. Billy always took great pride in everything he accomplished, giving 100% all the time. My son is a man of great character, integrity, and compassion. Would be, he would gladly be the first to offer his services to anyone in need. He gave freely and unselfishly to others, never wanting anything in return. He is a humble man and respectful to all. His friends would often tell me that to know Billy was to love Billy. He has a wonderful circle of friends who love and continue to support him today. Your Honor, our son is a very loving and caring man. He's been brought up in a Christian home. His love for Christ is unwavering. He has always been surrounded by loving relatives and family his entire life. The love he has for his family runs deep. One of his greatest loves is his wife, Barbara, and his two, ch his two children, Ava and Ethan. He's a wonderful husband and father, and I pray one day he'll be able to be with them again. His father and I are very proud of the man he's become. Your Honor, please take into consideration our son's past history. He has never, never been in trouble as a child or as an adult. He has always lived an honest life and provided a loving home for his, for his family. He will never we will never lose hope. And I will continue to pray that my son's voice and rights will be upheld and he will one day be able to return to his family. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mrs. Woodward, for you, uh, the, <clears throat> I want to try and supplement some of the areas that the pre-sentence investigation do not do that are required by laws part of the pre-sent investigation, so I'm going to ask you a few questions. <clears throat> In terms of your son's education, uh, do you know what the highest grade he completed? Uh, he, went, he graduated high school. He needed I was addressed, even though I'm asking the questions, please address He graduated high school and he had uh, uh, went to BCC for a short time. He received vocational training while he was in the military? Uh, yes, he did. Uh, at <clears throat> currently, he is not employed because of his VA disability, is that correct? That's correct. And how long uh, has he been determined to be disabled by the VA to the best of your Oh, my gosh. Long time. And was the VA benefits, which as a result of this case he will no longer be receiving, his primary uh, means of subsistence at the time of his arrest. Yes. I'd like to ask just the, if you could give the court a brief family history, uh, you, your husband, other relatives, brothers, sisters, spouse, and children. Billy's. Billy's? Uh, Billy's. First of all, family. you're his mother. I'm his mother. Is his father still living? His father is William Woodward the will third, will and he testing. and he will be also coming up here to speak. Does Billy have any brothers or sisters? Uh, Billy has a younger brother, Michael Ray Woodward, who is a fire chief of Titusville Fire Department. Uh, he has two nieces and nephews, uh, Jessica Woodward. And Jaden Woodward. They're my youngest son's two children and his wife, Stacy Woodward. Is Billy married? And his wife, yes. Billy's married, his wife Barbara, and he has two lovely children, Ava 
who is soon to be graduating high school this year, and a 10-year-old son, Ethan. How old is Ava? Ava is 17. She'll soon be 18. And he is currently married, and his relationship with his wife, Barbara, is good. Is that yes. correct? Yes, it is. Uh, we've had some testimony about his military history, uh, but he did volunteer for military service and serve honorably. Yes, he did. Received a medical discharge? Uh, he received an honorable discharge. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, receiving treatment for his physical and mental health through the VA at the time of his incident. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And we've had some. He's never had an issue with alcohol or substance abuse? No, never used drugs, never drank. But he was on uh, a number of prescribed Medication medications. From the VA, yes, he was. And uh, the last category that is required by statute was residential history. At the time of this offense, where he was, was he living? He was living at, uh, on Smith Drive, uh, 860, I mean, it was. Okay. And how long did he live there, approximately? Oh, my gosh. Uh, quite a few years. Excess of 12? Uh, From, uh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, going back. Yeah, going back about sure. 12. Okay. And, uh, of course, he's been in custody since the time of his arrest, yes. but his family's had to relocate. Is that yes, they Yes, they do. All right. Thank you very much. Does the state have any questions? I, I do. I wanted to ask you about the uh, work history. Um, when is it that he last? Was employed? Well, it was the Space Center, Kennedy Space Center. Okay. That was good. That too. That was my next question. Do you remember when when that job ended? No, I don't. That's the Okay. Was it um, a short time or a long time before this happened? Long time. Right. How about 2009? Does that sound right? I'm sorry, I, I don't know. Okay. Was he receiving uh, care at the VA when he was working at the Kennedy Space Center? That I'm not sure of. Okay. Do you remember the circumstances surrounding him no longer working there? Yes. Okay. And did that involve him? Threatening a supervisor? I don't recall him threatening a supervisor. I know he had problems at work being bullied by the people that he worked with. Okay. So there was there was an issue with him working with the people that he was employed with? Is yes. That, is that why he left? No. Okay, why did he leave? I'm not sure. I can't. It's been a while, sir. I don't remember. My husband might. All right. Um, has your, your son ever had uh, issues with alcohol to your knowledge? No. Mr. Eisenmayer, anything else you'd like to add? Nothing yeah. further. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And I'll just note for the record that her um, initial statement before the questioning by the attorneys is also um, a part of Defense Composite Exhibit 1 in evidence. Next witness. <coughs> Good afternoon, sir. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Please state your full name. William Francis Woodward. All right, and you have a statement that you'd like to present? Yes, I do. You may proceed when you're ready. First, I'd like to kind of reiterate what everybody else has said about my son's compassion and his heart. 
And I'm going to branch off into something else now. When he came home from the Army, he kind of missed her a month or two or so. And he says, Dad, he said, I'm going to go be a machinist. So he sought out a scholarship, so to speak, to go to machinist college, machinist school down at BCC, completed two years. And he started to work in various machine shops around the county. <coughs> When you enter that kind of business, you have to pay your dues. You have to start out making widgets of any kind, and you can work your way up. And like my wife said, he worked his way up to making flight hardware at Kennedy Space Center. You know, the problem was it was a union shop. And my son has one of my traits. He doesn't like bullies. He doesn't like people to bully other people. And he got bullied in that machine shop. They reset his machines on him at night, and then he'd have to recalibrate and reset them up the next day. And this is critical flight hardware he was making. And it got to the point where he was getting frustrated with, with the union guys. And a good friend of mine, who was pretty high up in that company at that time, looked over his shoulder and had him transferred to a place that wasn't union, and the people got along better. And he did very well there. Somewhere around 2001, uh, my company started looking for another person that did the job that I did. And there was nobody on the eastern side of the Mississippi that could do that job, that had learned how to do it. And they asked me about Billy. And I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything to him. I don't want him to work here. It's a horrible place. It's a union shop. People are, people are off with other people. And they called him anyway. And he said, yeah, he said, I'd like to work with my dad. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe I can help shelter some of that bullying from him. And we worked together about five years, I guess it was. Had a great time. He was probably every bit as good as I was or even better than I was at, at the job we did. And uh, sometime in the fall, winter, spring of 06, 07, our lead man started picking at him. I noticed little things like he would drive up behind him on a, on a field job where my son was working, and I might be over in another part of the field, and he would drive up behind him and, and blow the horn, scare him. And he's, he started little stuff like that. And then one day he walked into our office with a huge, big old sausage. My son was sitting at his desk. And he slapped him on the side of the head with it and said, here, boy, I got you something. The next thing that happened was he came in to the office. By the way, I stood up. I stood up to try to protect my son. And he reached around and got up and he come to me and he said, Dad, don't. It's your job. You can't hit him. You can't hurt him because it's your job. It's okay. So then the next thing our lead man came in and I'm sitting there with my son. And he knew that my son was deaf in his right ear. And he put a referee's whistle in his left ear and blew it as hard as he could. I stood up again. And this time I threatened him. I said, leave my son alone. And he said, you can't hurt me. I'm HR's little boy. And Billy again stood up and said, Dad, don't, don't do anything, please. Well, they kept going at it. And we get back to the employment record that Mr. Restus was talking about. Our lead man transferred out of our, uh, out of our department into another department where a bunch of grand, uh, general plant mechanics were working. And they made his brother-in-law the lead man over our department because neither one of us could supervise each other. So I was in the office with the lead man our former lead man's brother-in-law, when the call came in from him, can you send Billy to the ONC? And he put the phone down and he says, Billy, he says, I got a job for you over to the ONC. And it's, it's a terminology of buildings out there that we use. It's a big parking lot. Billy shows up and our former lead man's sitting there with two other people in trucks. And they got out and came around to where Billy was working, trying to mark the ground, doing his job. And the lead man leaned out and said something. The two men 
went and filed violence in the workplace against him, and he didn't. And, uh, and he didn't do anything. So later on, his wife was pregnant. We buried my mother, his grandmother, and then three weeks later they fired him for violence in the workplace. And I know he didn't do it. And I was even told by the union people later on that he didn't do it. And uh, so then Billy started uh, working at different jobs. One of them was driving that truck that Brian mentioned. Um, then he went to Lowe's driving a truck, and he already had a CDL, so he knew what was right and what was wrong with the truck. And he, he went back at Lowe's management with information that the truck is not roadable. And they said, you have to deliver the stuff. But he said, I can't do it because it will go against my license. Well, he left there and messed around with some other things. And, uh, and forward, forward up to July, August of 2012, I was standing in my son's front yard when Carrie Blake put her hands together and her fingers out and started going boom, boom, boom at all of us, standing in the son's yard. I stand in my son's yard and I witnessed that. Then I was standing in my son's front yard the day that Roger Picourt turned two dogs loose on him. And the police officer came to Billy's front yard and we stood there and the police officer told him there's not much she could do about it. And I said, but ma'am, I said, that's a felony. That happened, that, that we can prove that. It's in the video and audio file. And nothing happened. I was standing in my son's front yard, less than 10 feet from his sidewalk when Roger and Bruce Blake, Roger Gordon and Bruce Blake walked up on his sidewalk and started talking about, they have guns, we got shotguns. All the guns we got are legal. And I knew at that moment that if they had guns, it was illegal because they were all convicted felons. And I knew that person. I was standing in my front, in my son's front yard. I was walking, I started walking with my son at night to give him a witness presence because they were starting to follow him when he walked his dog around opposite directions on the block. So I started walking with him at night give him a witness presence and protect him if necessary. And on one occasion, more than one, Gary Hembry and a friend of his would walk some dog and they would catch up with us and uh, Gary would say something about Billy, look what we got, we're in charge. And uh, that was also the day, what, over the, the day before that, a couple of days before that, that uh, we came out of the courtroom and Gary Henry baited my son with a, look what we got now. The judge threw everything out, so now we're free to do what we want. And yeah, Billy went across the street and hit him. And all I could do was go with him and try to help protect him from anything else that might happen. Connor, my son does not deserve to be in prison. He does not deserve it. I'm going to ask you to please consider everything you've heard today. And please be as lenient as possible because he just doesn't deserve the treatment he's gotten. Not only throughout his life, but from, but from this court. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let's call Mr. Thompson. Good afternoon, sir. Please raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you Richard Allen Thompson. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. All right. Thank you, sir. And you have a statement to present? <clears throat> yes, I do. <clears throat> I am not a relative. Uh, in fact, I'm not related to the other Thompson. My, my name is spelled T-H-O-M-S-O-N. Thank you for clarifying that for me. Okay. I am a friend 
I met Billy and his dad in 2000. I started on a contract with the Air Force at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Uh, Billy and his dad were doing locating services. I was doing construction management. I met his dad, stand-up guy, very good to work with. Shortly after that, I met Billy, same thing. Real stand-up type individual, very strong work ethic. He needed something done, he got it done. Billy and I hit it off, his dad and I hit it off, we became friends. We'd go to lunch, <clears throat> of course his dad's a little older, <clears throat> so he and I became buddies. We regularly went to lunch, he would come and meet us, we do a Friday night barbecue thing, he often came and met us there. Uh, other social events, I'd been to his house, he'd been to my house. <clears throat> At the time this happened, Billy was one of the only people that I allowed to have a key to my house. Not even my mother had a key to my house. I trusted Billy emphatically, and I still do to this day. <clears throat> Billy had a very strong sense of duty. Duty to his country, duty to his job, and of all things, duty to his family. <clears throat> At one point, Billy worked with me on a weekend. As one of the ladies said, he didn't like to take any money. He came to work with me, not to help a buddy out, and he didn't want to take any money. Sometimes I would have to sneak gas into his tank on his truck to pay him for what he did. One day he worked with me, helped me take down a tree. He didn't want to get paid, but I insisted and I gave him some money. I saw him a few days later and he said, Rich, I used that money to buy a better car seat for my child. Now his wife didn't know he had that money. No one knew he had that money. He could have used it on himself or for anything. But his family came first. I'll tell you a story that I don't even think his family knows. 2003, <clears throat> one of my lifelong best friends is an Orange County Sheriff's deputy. He was working a car accident on I Drive when he was struck and run down. He was in the hospital with traumatic head injuries, brain swelling, and on life support. It happened at 8 in the evening. I spent the entire night at ORMC. That morning I left because I had to be at a job. <clears throat> I was on that job working. And we broke a force main. This is not a pleasant thing. A force main is a pipe that carries raw sewage. Every time the pump truck showed up, they pumped out the hole and they got to about within a foot of the pipe when the truck was full. The truck would leave to go get emptied and before the truck got back, the pumps kicked on and filled the hole back up with sewage. This happened four or five times. And it was obvious the flow rate and the timing was such this truck was never going to catch up. While this is going on, my phone is ringing off the hook with family, friends, law enforcement personnel calling me and begging me to come to Orlando because they're going to remove him from life support. The truck came back, pumped out. There's a foot of raw sewage over that pipe. And I knew that I had to do what I had to do to get it fixed. And I jumped into that sewage, and Billy jumped in with me, and we reached down in the raw sewage and we fixed that pipe. And then Billy said he had some towels and some sanitizer in his truck and helped me to clean up a little bit, and he said, you go, you need to go. I will stay here and get this done. And he did. He stayed there that night, he got everything bolted back up and good to go. And it allowed me to get to Orlando so I could be there when my friend was removed from life support. I will forever owe a debt to Billy. One of the reasons I'm here today and that was the way Billy was with everything.
Excuse me for one second. <clears throat> Billy told me what was going on in the neighborhood. I was aware we talked regularly, several times a week. At first, it started like one of these neighborhood things, but it got worse. It got terrible. Billy stopped coming to Friday night barbecues. At one point, we were working in Titusville. And I called him up and said, come meet us at Sonny's for lunch. And he's like, OK. And then he's like, no, can't be there. I'm like, what's the matter? He's like, I had a neighborhood problem again. <clears throat> so I went to his house to find a Titusville police officer there. There was another incident, and the police officer, as usual, and nothing against law enforcement, but as usual, the officer wasn't there when it happened. So it's a civil issue. They can't do anything about it. And these people were very experienced with the criminal justice system, and they knew exactly how it worked. I don't think Billy's ever even had a traffic ticket. The officer talked to him for a while, and he said, I'm sorry. And he left. It got to the point Billy would not leave the house. The threats against his family, his children, heinous threats, terrible threats against his children, the threats of burning the house down while they slept in it, he would not leave the house. He had become a prisoner there. As someone else said, if he left the house, it's because he took his whole family with him. I ask you for the greatest of leniency, and I want you to think that if you were living in that house under these terrorist threats, you would want Billy guarding your sleep. Please consider the greatest leniency. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Finally, we call Scott Crow. Scott Crow, please. Good afternoon, sir. Please raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to so help you, God? I do. Please state your full name. Jeffrey Scott Crow, C-R-O-W. Thank you, sir. You have a statement to present to the court? I do. You may proceed. I've known Billy Woodward now for 20 years, and uh, throughout these years, he's been a trusted friend and well-liked neighbor to me and my family. Bill's the kind of neighbor that you just love to be around. He would do anything he could to help you whenever you needed assistance. I cannot count the number of times that I have witnessed Billy help an elderly neighbor in the neighborhood, either after hurricanes or when trees need to be cut down. And probably other people have said this too. He never asked for money. It was always out of the kindness of his heart that he did this. And uh, I think because of uh, all these acts of kindness that I've seen towards other people, he's made me a much better person than I would have been from seeing this. Bill's the kind of guy that would literally give you the shirt off his back and think nothing of it. I personally known of times that he's provided meals for neighbors. He's paid off utilities for neighbors. And one time I remember an instance where he had given Christmas presents to help a neighbor out that couldn't afford to buy presents for their kids. Bill's a very simple man. He saw everybody as his friend. Due to this fact, I think that over time, some people have taken some people have taken this good part of generosity to uh, advantage of it over the years. He would go and help anybody that he could. And I just can't explain the type of person he was. He would be the person that you'd want to be your neighbor. He showed nothing but kindness and love towards everybody I've ever seen. Now, the situation that happened in our neighborhood had escalated. No one should ever have to go through that. My wife had made comments during the trial where she carried a handgun out at nighttime. And I can only imagine that was our fear, what Mr. Woodward and his family had to go through at that time. 
bottom line is that I hope this never happens again to anybody else because the situation with your back against the wall, we couldn't get help through the judge or the police. We were in a tough situation. And um, I pray you have mercy on this soul. He was just an outstanding person. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And Mr. Crow's uh, portion of what he presented here today is part of Defense Composite Exhibit 1. Thank you. Thank you. Judge, that ends the presentation of evidence that the defense is going to present. I have some legal argument and final argument. Okay, so the defense would rest for purposes of any evidence or testimony in uh, regards to the sentencing? I'll make sure that you change your mind. I'm sorry. Mr. Eisenberg, would brief, you like to take a recess? Mr. Woodward may okay. have changed his mind. Okay. So I need to make sure if he... Okay. So five, All right. uh, five minutes. We'll take a 10 minute recess. We'll go off record and we'll be in recess for 10 minutes. Thank you. Yes.